So this is the network panel. Um, up here at the top we have the Wi-Fi and the security uh, recorder. It's just a reconditioned PC, uh, but it's been doing well. And we've got the, uh, over here we have the uh, fiber interface, uh, the AT&T uh, router that they provided. Uh, no, I've turned off almost all the features on it except for the firewall. And I don't really, I just use it for the firewall. Um, actually to run their uh, little uh, TV service, uh, television service out their little boxes, you pretty much have to feed straight off of this. And so that's the only reason it's still there, although I have dumped their uh, TV boxes. And don't use that. This this uh, case here uh, from uh, Open. Let's see what is it uh, from Open House is actually fairly decent. It's my it's only like thirty dollars or so, but um, it was provided by the builder. Uh, although it was just bolted, screwed down to uh, a couple of studs, and uh, no backer board for attaching all the ancillary devices that are required. So uh, I put in the backer board a year ago, um, the day after closing on the house, uh, so that um, I could have the network guys come in and, and AT&T come in and put in the fiber and all of that. But it's been okay, but I've got a lot of cables. There's a lot of loose wire in here. Um, I've got additional cables that need to get uh, connected up. So it's time to replace this. It's just got to go. So what I need to do, what I have is the opportunity to put in an actual rack because I have some rack steel from uh, years ago. Um, I bought this in 2000 and it's a set of four pieces of heavy steel um, that you can screw down to uh, like wood, like a two by four, and uh, then it provides a rack. And this is used by um, I think this is typically used by like uh, you know, DJs and other mobile kind of operators that uh, want to build custom enclosures and put them on wheels and take them places. But in my case, this is going to work out, uh, I think, just fine. Because I have, between the stud, between this outlet here and the stud that goes uh, through behind this up here, you can see the screw, I've got... Mm, enough room to put a stud in on the left and then if I cut off this plywood here then I'll have room exactly 19 inches for a rack. I'm gonna give it a try. I've already got this steel and a few 19 inch rack network rack pieces so uh, we'll, we'll just see how it works out. I've got to move the the power to somewhere else of course. I've got to take out this box and move this, the AT&T switch. I've got to take this out without disturbing all the punch downs because I have to have the network still working pretty much while I do all of this work. I can power things, power cycle things briefly as I you know, move the electrical, but I've really got to keep the network up and operational. So that's the challenge for this weekend. Here I have cut a notch in the case to free the cables so that I can take out the old uh, punch down and we can start removing the rest of the gear. All right, strapped that up, the uh, router up to keep it out of the way and operational. Now I can get the uh, case out. Here you can see the back of the plywood where I need to cut it down the edge of the stud. And to do that safely, I need to set the depth of the circular saw blade to not quite cut all of the way through the plywood. And after the pass with the circular saw, there's about a sixteenth of an inch of material left. And then here's the rack opening with the steel installed. Um, and then here's the close-up of the edge of the plywood with uh, no damage to the 2x4, uh, the steel racking in black, and then the uh, reinforcing steel that I attached to the back to avoid any deflection. All right, so here is the completed rack. Um, on the left, I've got some pegboard for miscellaneous tools, everything that I needed for uh, doing the punch down and stuff, I kept over there, uh, just mostly for convenience. Down on the right, I've got the VoIP uh, stuff, here at the bottom, we have the uh, 
the two UPS units. Uh, one is for network and the other is for the network video recorder and the uh, server. Uh, here we have the uh, NVR and then the cable modem, or rather the uh, AT&T uh, router that connects up to the fiber. This is my FreeNAS server. Yes, uh, build number 45. I've built quite a few machines over the years. Up here we have the uh, cable mat, the yeah cable matters. That's the brand um, Keystone uh, panel, and I've put in uh, the cables I currently have uh, punched or previously punched, and now I've got uh, some more already run and ready to go. There will be a video on that. Uh, and then I've got wire management here, and this is by Rosewill. If I can get it to, boy, it locks pretty well. So you can see it has. Uh, little fingers here to organize the wires and then it locks in over it. Um, I really like this one. This is the Rosewill. I'll leave a uh, link. And here we have the uh, Cisco router that used to be mounted uh, vertically over here on the side and that's been cleaned up. And then of course the fiber uh, interface. I did not touch that. I didn't want to didn't want to mess with that especially in these working from home days. So here's my rack. I've got a couple of vented panels here uh, over and ab above and below the uh, switch just to make sure there's plenty of air uh, can go over the surfaces through here, although there's it's wide open on the back. Then I've got a, uh, a double blank panel, which is enough space to put in another um, keystone and wire organizer. So I can do that right here. So I'd have keystones here, the patch panel here, and then I'd have the wire organizer right here, and then they can connect into the switch. So each of these uh, punch downs is uh, 24 ports, and this is a 48 port switch, so I uh, will be all set. Got another blank here, uh, just to provide a little room uh, for working with the uh, server. Yep. This really is built in under the stairs. There's a light here. Here we've got the uh, keystone and its cable management uh, below it. Then there's a uh, vent slot. Then we have the uh, big Cisco switch here. Another vent. We've got the blanks for uh, future, future expansion. Then we have the main server. It is sitting on top of an inverted shelf right here. So this is one of those shelves, except upside down. And that made it a lot easier to put this big, heavy server in and slide it in. I can't get rails for it. Uh, I didn't find a rail. I've never found a rail kit that would fit it. So, you know, we'll make do with a shelf. And the shelf also uh, provides a little wire management. Um, then another, another uh, shelf down here with the... Uh, network video recorder and then the router a uh, little bit of uh, mess with the wires over here finally the uh, bottom shelf with the uh, two UPS units and provides a place to store a keyboard and mouse when I need uh, to plug those into the USB on the front of the NVR or occasionally a keyboard onto the front panel of the server there's also uh, some wire management here and it just runs down and again on the other side tidied up the uh, electrical a little bit got a knot of excess cable here I'm gonna leave that for now because I may move the punch down uh, down uh, a little bit uh, because I may need additional room again more wire management I uh, tried to dress the cables a little bit on the left so that we had a fairly clean run and then there's a power outlet back here just for the rack uh, that's a 20 amp circuit uh, there's only one other outlet on this branch so there should be plenty of power available and reliable and that's really that's really it and here's the uh, final rack with a monitor up. I uh, wasn't sure how this was going to turn out, but uh, I'm very pleased with the results. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. I hope this uh, inspires someone to do networking at their home or office, and uh, 
if you do, let me know how that turns out. I'm interested in what other people have done with their home networks.